Welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're going to be talking about SEO myths. We're going to be doing some myth busting, um, I believe is the word, and um, I'm hoping that this will clear up a lot of SEO myths that have may have been spread in the past um, and it should give you a better indication as to what you should and shouldn't be doing when it comes to a SEO strategy as well. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So myth number one, more links are better than more content. Well, backlinks are important for SEO. The quality of content and relevance to user queries have become increasingly significant. A single high quality piece of content can outperform numerous low quality backlinks. So this is, um, this is the actual myth itself. So the more links are better than more content. That definitely is a myth. Um, I always, always, always say to people, especially when they are, for example, a link building client of mine, I always say, listen, there is no point in even doing any form of link building until your content is super high quality. Um, so what I mean by super high quality, I mean, have you done topical authority? Are you winning on topical authority? Um, have you... Um, essentially built the best articles for that um, silo. So if, say, for example, we wanted to rank for best running shoes, have we also got topical authority on the best places to run? Um, what running shoes should you wear uh, during a marathon? What running shoes should you wear on a treadmill? What running shoes are best for pregnant uh, women, etc., etc. right? Once you have all of those articles, I would then start looking to do some link building. You can obviously start tapping some uh, links here and there, but obviously don't um, forget the fact that you don't have topical authority and also you don't have domain authority. So they should essentially be aligning with each other. Your The amount of articles you upload and also the amount of links that you are also building to your website. So don't f think that you all can only get away with one and not do the other. So myth number two, if we go down, keyword density is key. This was a time when a specific keyword density was considered essential for a ranking. Now search engines prioritize the content that naturally incorporates keywords in a way that's helpful to the reader. So this is um, this used to be the case. Keyword density was massive, probably around in 2015, 2016. And basically, <laughs> um, the best way that I could describe keyword density is if you had a article on... Um, the best treadmills, right? Google essentially ranked whoever was higher that mentioned best treadmills the most. Um, obviously, you could over-optimize when it came to keyword density a little bit, but the guys that had mentioned best treadmill twice on their article, as opposed to the guys that had mentioned it 16 times in their article, um, the guys that had mentioned it 16 times, Google would look at that page and think, ah, right, okay, this article's more clear about what it was trying to rank for. We would rank that higher. Now, is keyword density dead? Um, I don't think it is, personally speaking, but that's not to say go and put place your keywords 85 times in your article. Um, there are There is a very different variation of keyword density nowadays. So even with the, this explanation that it's given, um, I'm, I'm a little bit on, on the edge of this. So let me explain what I mean. So keyword density, the days of essentially just firing your, your keyword in 60 times, that is dead, right? There's, there's no denying that. However, you can add variations of your keyword. So if we're trying to rank for best treadmills, we could have um, top treadmills or we could have um, best treadmills for uh, beginners, best tread or fastest, best um, treadmills for marathon runners, etc., etc. So, so there's variations that we can actually include on our article. So keyword density is slightly dead, but you can obviously have secondary keywords and LSIs um, on your page. Um, so that is my thoughts on that myth. Myth number two, um, SEO is a, 
SEO is a one-time effect. SEO is an ongoing process. Search engines frequently update their algorithms and competitors adjust their strategies. So continuous effort is necessarily to is necessary to maintain and improve rankings. So I actually agree with this. Um, a lot of people think that SEO is a one-time effort. Now, one thing I will say is that you always have competitors either um, going in and out of business or potentially they might start competing with you. So for example, if yes, you might be ranking for six months, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna be continuously ranking for, for the rest of your time. Um, and then not only that is new product ranges or new services come to live. Um, so for example, um, when the UK uh, left Europe, um, there was a lot more people searching for immigration law because they wanted to move to the UK. Um, so if you hadn't um, had been optimizing your website, if you were a lawyer for immigration services in the UK or immigration services in Manchester, um, you would be missing out on a lot of business. Um, same goes with like e-commerce stores, right? E-commerce stores. If say, for example, you are looking to buy an AC unit AC units come in and out of range every single year. Te televisions come in and out of um, range every single year. So SEO isn't always a one one time um, thing that you do. That being said, you might decide to hire your SEO budgets or lower your SEO budgets depending on the type of year. For example, if you guys have a outdoor gardening website or an outdoor garden furniture website as an e-commerce store, you might decide to um, lower your budgets throughout the months of, let's say, October through to March, for example, because you know that those se seasonal months, no, not many people are actually searching you for your products. So that's just one thing to bear in mind um, if you are um, looking to do SEO. It's not just a one-time effort thing. Um, so meta tags don't matter. Although meta tags like the keyword uh, tag have Diminished in importance, other tags such as title and meta description play a crucial role in click-through rates and user engagement. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so meta tags used to be essentially people, SEOs basically used it for another spot to have keyword density. Now, meta tags essentially have um, been diminished in a, in, in a lot of their value. Um, it's not to say that you should completely ignore them, but... For example, if you have got your H1 in your URL, your page title, and also your meta description, that can definitely help with click-through rates and also Google understanding what that page is about. So for example, if my website, let's say, is casual-.com, if I was to do casual-.com forward slash best running shoes for men, um, and then in the page title, we have got um, here, I don't know, 25 of the best running shoes for men. And then in the H1, which is the most important tag on the actual page, or one of the most important tags on the actual page. Again, if we repeat the uh, the keyword there, that does help. So again, meta tags do definitely, um, they, they don't matter as much because I, I remember back in like 2015, 2016, you'd place your keyword in, you would rank very, very quickly. Um, it's, it's a little bit more of a slower process nowadays, but um, it does definitely help to fill out some of that information. So then we have got um, social media signals directly impact SEO. While social media can increase website traffic and engagement direct uh, likes, shares and followers, are not ranking factors for search engines like Google. However, the visibility in social media can lead to more backlinks and other signals that do affect SEO. So this is a sliding scale, right? If you've got 6,000 followers on um, Twitter, that doesn't mean that you're gonna rank number one for all of your keywords. Um, so likewise, if you have got 3,000 likes on your last post, again, that's not gonna mean you're gonna rank number one for all of your keywords. Um, what it will do though is it will help build branded searches um so people might see a tiktok reel of yourself or you might be on a podcast and then they might search oh who is this casual dash guy and then they might end up on your website so it is it's a little bit of a it's a great area um social media signals direct it's one of those um 
it is niche dependent, I would say, um, the, the, that one. Um, longer content always ranks better. I actually done a video on this recently. Um, and basically, while longer content has the potential to be more comprehensive and earn more backlinks, quality and relevance are more important. If the content is long but lacks substance or relevance, it won't perform well. Now, what I would say to this is that it depends solely on the type of page you are trying to rank. So if you have got a guide or a how-to article, obviously it might be a couple thousand words. If it is a service page or let's say it's a product description page on your e-commerce store, it's going to be a lot shorter than a how-to guide. Um, so this is very touch and go. It depends on what your competitors are doing um, and how many words you need to describe a certain action. So for example, if you are doing a how-to guide on how to replace your windows, it's gonna be a little bit of a lengthy guide, right? Um, but if it is a product description for a TV remote on your e-commerce store, it's gonna be a lot less words. So just bear that in mind when you are writing SEO optimized content. Um, it's never just about, oh, I need to get 6,000 words in. It's uh, just do what you think is right. Um, there are also a lot of tools that will tell you roughly what, how many words you should have on certain uh, pages as well. So local SEO is only for small businesses. Um, businesses of all sizes can benefit from local SEO, especially when they have a local presence or serve specific geographic areas. It helps in targeting local customers and appearing in local search queries. Now, I would definitely um, agree with this. There are a lot of law firms, for example, in the UK, some of which that are doing upwards of 15 million plus, um, and they still focus on local SEO. Um, and it, they, I wouldn't rec I wouldn't say that they fall into the small business um, category, especially if they are doing 15 million plus. Um, I would say that that's pretty big. Um, to say the least. So just bear that in mind. It's never just um, for a local business. You can get a lot of traffic very quickly by doing local SEO as well. So just bear that in mind. If you haven't done this, um, definitely look to build out geographical pages on your website. Images don't affect SEO. Images can significantly impact SEO through their file names, alt text, and relevance to the content. Optimized images can improve site speed, user engagements, and rankings. Yes, 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 yes. I can't agree more with that statement. Now, for example, let me give you guys a few examples of this. If you are a an accountant, right? Your images ain't gonna be that appealing. However, if you are a home renovation expert that specializes in kitchen renovations, right? You want to be uploading unique and nice images from previous case studies that you might have done. Same goes with e-commerce stores. So making certain that your file name is correct um, and it's not just straight off of like your iPhone or for example, your camera, like cameras, for example, I believe they save images in like, I think it's like DCIM underscore 005 and it means it was the fifth image taken on the camera, right? You don't want to be do. You don't want to just be clicking and dragging that through to your website. You want to be naming all of your files because um, again, it will help rank your files or your images in Google Images as well. So definitely be looking to do that when it comes to image SEO. Um, HTTPS is not important for SEO. Google has confirmed that HTTPS is a ranking signal. Secure websites can earn slight ranking boosts over non-secure websites, making HTTPS important for our SEO. Now, if your website has a contact form, if you are taking payments, if you are an e-commerce store, um, and I think that's it. If, you do, if you're doing any three of these, um, you should definitely be looking to have an, uh, an SSL. To be honest, guys, I believe like every single host now provides you with an SSL. So this should be, this is SEO 101. Um, just have an SSL. I'm not even going to dive into that one. Um, 
mobile optimi optimization isn't necessary. With mobile first indexing, Google predominantly uses the mobile version of the content for indexing and ranking. Mobile optimization is crucial for SEO, yes. So I believe two years ago, um, 2022 or 2021, Google actually moved over to mobile first indexing. Um, so when they are crawling your website, they aren't looking at the desktop version, they are actually looking at the mobile version. So just bear that in mind, make certain that it is optimized. I see a lot of websites where, uh, let's say the web, the actual mobile itself is this, but the H1 is, is out, it's just poking out, you can't even read it. So make certain that your website is actually good looking on mobile. Um, let's scroll up. High bounce rates are bad. Bounce rates need context. A high bounce rate is in, in, uh, inherently bad if users find what they need quickly. It's more about satisfaction and, and engagement with the content. So this is a little bit more related to HCU. A lot of people think that if they have got high bounce rates, that that's a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing because that might mean that, they, that the user has got what they want and they have left the, the SERP. The bad thing is, is when users pogo stick. Now, this is something very different to bounce rates. Um, there is somewhat of a correlation, but you will very quickly tell because if you if users are pogo sticking um, from your website to another website, um, your website won't rank very uh, for that keyword for a long period of time. And now, what a, a pogo stick is is basically, let's say we search. Uh, um, best running shoes for men, right? We click on position one, we don't get what we want, we click on position two, and then we don't get what we want, and then we go to position position three. That is essentially what a pogo stick is. Um, so that is um, SEO myth number 11. Let's take a look at number 12. Guest blogging is dead. Guest blogging, when done correctly, can still be effective way to gain backlinks, share, exper uh, share expertise, and increase visibility. The key is focusing on quality contributions to reputable sites. Um, now, guest blogging, again, there are a lot of toxic links. If you get the right ones, it can push your website very, very high. Um, some of the biggest... Um, websites are still doing guest blogging so for example money <clears throat> saving experts still do it they are a massive finance site in the uk um martin lewis he's doing guest blogs on other websites all the time and they get some serious amounts of traffic <clears throat> So, um, duplicate content leads to penalties. While duplicate content is not recommended, Google does not penalize it uh, for it directly. Instead, it may filter similar content to show the most relevant page when, which can affect visibility. <clears throat> so, duplicate content, there's two sides to this. If, they, uh, if it's two similar um, pages on your website, it can. Um, lead to Google being confused and not ranking any of the pages. One thing that I would say is that duplicate content, um, if you are copying somebody else's content and you're just pasting it on your website, your website will not rank, um, but their website won't will get penalized. So the person that you're copying the content from, they will still be able to rank. You're the one being penalized for it. So just bear that in mind. Um, and then... PPC ads improve organic rankings. Running PPC ads does not directly improve organic search rankings. However, ads can increase visibility, which potentially boosts organic traffic indirectly. Yeah, I agree. So again, if you think of the user signals, more people are landing on your page, which means that essentially um, there's more visitors on your website, which can indirectly impact your SEO. Um, so just bear that in mind. And then number 15 ai content will always rank well while ai content help uh, well while ai content can help generate content search engines prioritize content that provides value is original and satisfies user intent simply relying on ai without ensuring quality and relevance with can backfire yes i agree with this um a hundred percent so you should be using ai to supercharge your team of writers or your uh your your workforce um, but that's not to say to just, let's say, copy all of this and paste it onto your website. 
Um, you should be essentially manually checking some of the content, making certain that the content that is going live on your website is actually relevant, it's matching the intent, it's factual. Sometimes ChatGBT and OpenAI, it spits out some... It, what looks like good content, but it's actually non-factual. So just bear that in mind when you guys are looking to use any form of AI on your website. So that has been 15 SEO myths that I have busted. Make certain to leave a comment if you think I have um, forgot about any SEO myths. I'd love to hear some of your SEO myths that you guys have heard over the years. And if you guys do want a free 15-minute growth strategy call for your website, make sure to check out casualdash.com. The link is in the description. Thanks.